Last week, I posted a video of an AI that helped me to make a Dungeons & Dragons adventure. Game Master's here, and in today's video, I've got the AI providing to me a visualization of an introductory adventure to Ravenloft. And I'm referring to Death House. And I'm going to reference the online PDF version. I picked this one because it's also free uh, from Wizards of the Coast, should you choose to run it for yourself. It can also be found in the Appendix B section of The Curse of Strahd. And this all just seems very fitting since, you know, Halloween is just around the corner. I'll also note that in last week's video, there were a lot of comments about how this AI type artwork is going to put illustrators and artists out to the curb. Let's take a look at what we've come up with. And a little later, I'll tell you in the video uh, why exactly AI artwork poses really zero risk to a person with a paintbrush. Death House has some disturbing elements in it. This is a horror styled game, so be aware. The imagery that the AI produced that you're about to see it can be a touch on the dark side as well. What I did was take specific descriptions from key parts of this adventure and fed it to the Midjourney AI. The cover has a raven providing a very ominous atmosphere, and this is what the AI produced. You can see right off the tone that is being set. Death House, as mentioned, is dark and somewhat disturbing, and our AI raven sits gazing over a darkened sky. Odd things appear to be floating and drifting in the breeze. The overall story of Death House is that the players enter the village of Barovia, encounter two children standing in front of a house, are asked by the children to rid the house of a monster that dwells within and save the day. Word for word, this is the first description provided that I gave to the AI. The gravel road leads to a village, its tall houses dark as tombstones. Nestled among these solemn dwellings are a handful of closed-up shops. Even the tavern is shut tight. A soft whimpering draws your eye toward a pair of children in the middle of an otherwise lifeless street. Now, I'd say that the AI got the visual here pretty spot on. Enter the two children. The girl is 10-year-old Rose and her 7-year-old brother Thorn. The description states that Thorn is weeping and clutching a stuffed doll. Rose is trying to hush Thorn. Further, we are provided with, after shushing the boy, the girl turns to you and says, There's a monster in our house. She then points to a tall brick row house that has seen better days. Its windows are dark. It has a gated portico on the front ground floor, and the rusty gate is slightly ajar. The houses on either side are abandoned. Their windows and doors are boarded up. Additionally, we are given in a side note that the house has four stories, two balconies, and wooden floors throughout. The AI certainly captured the overall feel of gloom here, and while the house is technically four stories, it does not appear to be made of brick, nor is it a row house. And the other houses depicted are very clearly lit. Still, the visual that the AI provided really does set the mood, and I'd honestly pick the version it generated over the clean version provided in the PDF. Now, before we enter the death house, I'd love to ask that if you're enjoying this video to please give it a thumbs up. It really helps to spread it to more eyes, and I thank you kindly for that. Upon entering the death house, we find ourselves in the main hall. The adventure tells us that this is a wide hall that runs the width of the house with a black marble fireplace at one end, and that mounted on the wall above the fireplace is a longsword, which I just don't see. It further tells us that the wood-paneled walls have carved images of vines, flowers, nymphs, satyrs, and those that inspect carefully will also see serpents and skulls inconspicuously carved into the wall's designs. Now, I'd say that those skulls are much less uh, inconspicuous and more kind of in your face. <laughs> but what this AI produced is still pretty on par with the overall feeling of what Death House is all about. Doom and dread. As we continue to explore, we enter a room known as the Den of Wolves. This is an oak paneled room that looks much like a hunter's den. Mounted above the fireplace is a stag's head, and positioned around the outskirts of the room are three stuffed wolves. Now I see maybe one stuffed wolf in there, Looks like it's standing on one of the tables, but I certainly see stag antlers. Again, major feeling of creepy. As we head up to the second floor, we enter the main hall. The PDF tells us that unlit oil lamps are mounted on the walls. Hanging on the wall is a portrait of the Durst family. Uh, the two children we met on the road earlier, Rose and Thorn, this would be their family. Suits of armor stand flanking wooden doors, and each suit holds a spear. Now, I certainly see that this description is reflected in the AI's version. Uh, it's not exact, but again, the mood and overall style is on point. 
In one of the rooms, we find a chest, and within that chest are three blank books with black leather covers. It also states that there are three spell scrolls, two deeds, and a will. Uh, perhaps they're under these three books, but regardless, even though the pages are supposed to be blank, the covers are, <laughs> well, they're going to give me pause in just even picking them up. In another room, we find a jewelry box made of silver with gold filigree carved into it. Uh, it contains three gold rings and a necklace with a topaz pendant. The AI went a little bit crazy with the filigree, but overall, again, the visual is certainly there. Heading up to the third floor, we see a suit of black plate armor standing against a wall, draped in cobwebs. We have to be very careful, though. Uh, getting within five feet of it will cause it to spring to life, as it's actually a suit of animated armor. I, the glowing eyes may have given that away. <laughs> Further exploration finds us in a dusty chamber with sheets covering old furniture. Now, this part is somewhat dark. In this room are the remains of the nursemaid to the children and disturbing those remains causes the nursemaid specter to appear and attack. It seems the AI chose to place the specter into this image. That's pretty spooky. And while we found two monsters, uh, the animated suit of armor and a specter, these are not the monsters that the children spoke of. So we find a wooden spiral staircase that descends down into darkness, a uh, basement level perhaps, or a dungeon of sorts. We carefully descend the wooden steps. They creak and moan under our footfalls. We make our way to a room almost cavern-like, and the description reads, This room is festooned with moldy skeletons that hang from rusty shackles against the walls. A wide alcove in the south wall contains a painted wooden statue carved in the likeness of a gaunt, pale-faced man wearing a voluminous black cloak, his pale left hand resting on the head of a wolf that stands next to him. In his right hand, he holds a smoky gray crystal orb. Now, short of the moldy skeletons, I'd say the AI got this one. Well, and the orb maybe looks like it became part of the statue's head, but that honestly kind of adds to the creepy factor. There is a lot more to this dungeon level, but for the sake of video length, uh, we're going to go to the final two most interesting elements. We are provided with the following description. A hole in the wall leads to a naturally formed alcove. The half-submerged pile of refuse that fills it is a shambling mound, dubbed as Lorgoth the Decayer. There is little more to the adventure itself, and I've tried not to give out major spoilers should you find yourself running it, uh, or if you're a player and just don't want the whole thing, well, spoiled. Suffice it to say that once we have satisfied the slaying of the monster as Rose and Thorn requested, or accomplished one of the other tasks of sacrifice, Strahd is satisfied either way and prompts the mist to recede, allowing us to return home from Ravenloft. This final shot depicts the vampire Strahd overlooking the village of Barovia as the mists depart. Now, I realize that the images didn't track with the descriptions completely. However, I do think that the AI captured the overall essence and to many degrees an exact feeling of the elements found within Death House. It's an adventure that takes place in Ravenloft, a dark and spooky domain, and the images we just saw most certainly reflect that dread and awe. The AI used is Midjourney, and while I don't think that there is a risk that it will replace a human drawing a scene, I do think that this form of artwork will change things. Uh, did the camera that took a photograph of an apple affect the human that was painting an apple? No. Two vastly different mediums. Uh, AI renderings from a descriptive prompt is just a new medium, similar to taking a block of clay or a chunk of wood and crafting something from it. None of those mediums pose a risk to any of the other mediums. Again, that's all this is, an artificial intelligence that interprets your descriptions and turns them into a visual. We mentioned at the top of this video that we use this AI to help us craft a Dungeons & Dragons adventure, and if you'd like to see that, you can check it out here. What do you think of this? I, it's pretty amazing to me, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Let's chat down in the comments, uh, and until next our paths cross, may the mists of Ravenloft not keep you trapped for all eternity in a spooky AI-produced image.